2018 was a year of change. In general, it's been a bit of a challenging year for me, to be really honest. The most difficult and life-changing thing that happened in 2018 was my grandmother's passing. Other than my folks, she was the one who brought me up and really shaped my thinking. A lot of my values are from her and what she taught me. She had been sick for a while now, with a few scares in 2017 when she was admitted to hospital, and there were a few times when the family had been told to be prepared. Still, I never thought we'd lose her. It's hard, losing someone close to you, and while the death of my two grandpas hit me, this one hit me and the entire family really, really hard. Nothing ever prepares you for death and the grief that comes with it. I tried desperately to get over it, move on, which I guess I kind of did in that I went back to regular life quite soon after the funeral, but the grief has hit me suddenly here and there in the course of mundane daily life really unexpectedly and I'm still learning how to cope. With 2018, I was forced to say goodbye to someone so dearly loved and that was right back in January. We all missed her. A week after her passing, I was later to go on a work trip to Bhutan. While the place was beautiful, it was admittedly difficult to really enjoy it fully while still grieving. I think about her death and it reminds me of the transients of life. In 2018, I took on, I guess, then a really YOLO mentality and travelled up a storm every chance I got. A lot of them impulse trips, a few of them quite epic trips. Shiga Kogan in Japan, for example. I crashed my friend's trip on impulse and booked this a week before I went. No regrets though. Sports in general I find cathartic and is at once my happy place as well as a form of stress relief. I love snowboarding but I equally love being in the vastness of the mountains, feeling small and yet at one with nature. Those were fun times. Something that changed my perspective even more than I expected was finally doing Everest Base Camp. It's been something I've been wanting to do for years now. A pipe dream of sorts that I just never prioritised nor made time for. This also happened really impulsively when I met up with a friend at the party and she said she was making a trip. She invited me along when I said I always wanted to do it and within a month I booked it, decided, packed and just left. Time spent in the mountains is so wonderful. There's a happiness brought on by the simplicity of life Concerns are confined to you know, simple things like how many hours to walk, what there is to eat, and how, just how to stay warm. Time is spent in the beauty of the hills, working to scale them. Downtime is spent patting yourself on the back for the day's progress on the trek, hanging with like-minded friends, just enjoying a well-deserved simple meal and a laugh. There's something about being away in a remote place that makes one very introspective. I'm not the most introspective of people, but even I get very introspective in the mountains. Having to rough it out made me feel grateful for everything I have at home. Working towards a goal taught me persistence. We were stuck for days unable to fly home because of bad weather, and that taught me patience and to cherish simple comforts at home that I previously took for granted. I was happy to have made it to base camp and have my eyes set on Kilimanjaro next. The other epic trip that happened in 2018 was to Peru. I fell in love with this country full of unspoiled nature, rich history and really awesome food. We did the four day, three night hike to Machu Picchu. It was the husband's first ever overnight hiking trip and his first time camping. Again, I feel happy as when amongst nature like that and we both really enjoyed the trek that took us through the historic trail of the Incas. Machu Picchu was absolutely amazing to behold, but more than that, Peru as a country was outstanding. We had so many awesome experiences like riding horses through local villages. Uh, we also got chased by dogs on horseback. Don't have footage of that because I was trying to hang on to the horse. Uh, we went exploring the canyons, we spotted condors and we went through vast valleys. I think Peru is a place that I'll definitely be back for. But I digress, the point is that 2018 was a year of epic travel and experiences. Other than these two trips, I also went to Bangkok with Pomelo Fashion, one of my favourite cities with one of my favourite online stores. Went really out of my comfort zone to a silent retreat in Chiang Mai with mom. 
It was her first ever trip without dad and we kind of did it together to help us to understand the grieving process. Uh, this was just a couple of months after my grandmother passed away. We went to Cambodia, well I went to Cambodia where Jamie and I were challenged to eat rats. <laughs> it was always fun times though, um, but yeah, that rats bit, not sure. I went to Ho Chi Minh twice because a very close girlfriend is now based there so she said to treat her home over there like a second home to come to Saigon anytime to stay with her and so I took that literally in fact I'm planning a third trip before the year is up I went to Seoul with two friends I've been mates with since we were in our teens you know three of us have gone through so much together over the years a lot of which I, I cannot mention <laughs> But this was the first time the three of us travelled together and it was pretty awesome. We ate, we partied, we chatted up a storm all day and I realised that company is really everything on trips. I went to Bali way too many times this year. Once was for a friend's epic 60th birthday party. I hope my 60th is as epic. The other was to hang with my cousin who is English and based in London. but She happened to be in Bali so we met there. The last was a trip with my cousins on my dad's side. We had so much fun in each other's company. We never even needed the beach. We didn't even see the beach. We just spent time playing bridge and hanging out and just enjoying the company. I went to Phuket with the girls where eating, drinking and surfing was how we spent our leisurely days. I went to Bangkok again with another bunch of girls. You know, I have very different groups of girlfriends and I treasure my time spent with each of them. I don't know if this is overcompensating for the lack of a sister but I find that every trip is different and uh, yeah, as I said, I realise more and more how company is the most important over like going to fancy places. Um, and that's it, I also went to Batam and to JB with the family. My family is a large one, with, it's like eight of us plus a baby so it's tough to travel together because it's tough to coordinate everyone's leave. I have friends who dread trips with their folks but honestly I love hanging out with my parents and it was really nice being able to hang and be together as a big family. 2018 was also a year of self-improvement. I've always been someone constantly looking to improve myself, but this year I took even more steps in that direction. I signed up for the Tony Robbins conference in order to be inspired. Uh, my review on the thing is while I had growls with, they tried to oversell us a lot of stuff, I still find the man himself very inspiring and he's so charismatic on stage. Gary Vee is another one of my heroes and the husband and I signed up for our conference solely because he was a keynote speaker in it. His energy, passion and determination inspires me. In 2018, I saw a therapist for the very first time as well. I never understood why people who didn't have what I considered to be big problems saw a therapist. But this year with my granny's passing and with just some very difficult things and times at home that I couldn't really speak openly about, I felt like I really needed one. No regrets and uh, I'm happy to share more about seeing a therapist in another video if you're keen. I'm also thankful for the many good clients I had the chance to work with this year. Thanks for trusting me to host your events, front your brand and create content around your campaigns. While I've hosted events of all sorts, you know, I've moderated forums and I've even spoken on panels, a particular milestone for me was giving the keynote speech at an event for Great Eastern. You know, honestly, while public speaking isn't a problem, this was the very first time I was there just to speak. You know, not to host or anything, but just to speak for over an hour. Not to present anything, but just to speak. And my only brief was to inspire. I was unsure, I was a little worried, and I even got some professional help to polish. You know, I think one can always improve, so I got someone to help me polish up my uh, presentation, but it all paid off in the end. So Great Eastern, uh, they've since asked me back to speak at another event, which is honestly the greatest compliment and validation. You know, in this line, no one really tells you you've done a good job or gives you a bonus or a promotion for your work. So clients who keep working with me, who, who call me back for a repeat job, this really serves as affirmation for me. You also have to be critical yet positive, so you keep improving while continuing to believe in yourself enough to keep going. So there's that fine balance. So thanks everyone who's asked me back for repeat jobs. Uh, at the end of 2017, which was last year, I had hoped to finally learn to chill and be still. For better or for worse, I kind of learned this in 2018, so I think I succeeded. This year was a year of growth and acceptance. I became even more comfortable with being me, 
quirks, weirdness, and everything else. As an extreme extrovert, I accepted that I need people around me, and that's okay. Just like people need me time, I just need people. I also learned that time is the most valuable commodity of all, and I took the time to strengthen relationships with important people around me, as well as took time for myself to do things that make the depths of my soul sing. This includes things like hiking, snowboarding, sports in general, just being in nature. In 2019, well, I hope it brings more growth, uh, developments on all fronts, and a lot of unbridled joy. I hope, of course, for more opportunities and to be able to do good work, but also just for my loved ones and I to have peace and happiness. Well, let's say goodbye to 2018 and happy 2019.